Good morning, my dear students. My name is Neer Traina. I'm your science teacher. I'm currently available at the Hamlet Tuition Center, Brahmatul Kathmandu. My contact number is 9849135739. And I'm also available at the Kumudini Kunja Secondary School, Kalimati Kathmandu, which was established in 2036 BM, BS. And since its establishment, it has uh, devoted itself for knowledge and wisdom. My dear students of grade 9, this is your science class and in your science class we have been discussing about the lesson classification of plants and animals. And up to our previous class, we have explained all up to phylum chordata and subphylum partibrata. In today's class, we are going to discuss about the classes which are included in partibrata. Okay, the first class we are going to discuss today is class 1 Pisces okay as many of you know Pisces are those vertebrates which do not have any external limbs okay those vertebrates which do not have any external limbs they are kept in the class Pisces actually Pisces is also referred as the super class okay super class Pisces and according to Whitaker according to Whitaker Pisces is referred as a super class and in uh, the super class Pisces there are two class classes chondrochthyophysis and um, ichthyophysis osteoichthyophysis okay there are two classes but we are not going in that much detail so according to our syllabus we are studying Pisces as a class some examples of Pisces are shark rohu asala swordfish seahorse etc keep it in mind whales and dolphins are not kept in class Pisces whales and dolphins are not Pisces because they have external limbs their hands the other four limbs are modified into a flapper okay their four limbs or their hands are modified into flapper and their hind limbs or their legs are modified into uh, tails that is why we do not consider them as the class Pisces Pisces are only those which do not have external limbs okay you can have a look at the skeleton of Pisces okay let us have a look at the skeleton of Pisces okay this is a skeleton of shark this is a model only this is not real okay nonetheless this is a skeleton of shark and in this skeleton you can see can you see any limbs here legs there are no pelvic girdles or pelvic bones there are no shoulder bones there are only ribs okay and there are no bones for their legs at all okay so these are the creatures which do not have limbs but if you have a look at the skeleton of well you will see something like this. look here this is the shoulder girdle also called shoulder blade and from here the um, bones of four limbs are there and these bones of four limbs they are modified into flappers Okay, these bones they are modified into flappers so whales and dolphins they have external limbs it is the class Pisces that do not have any external limbs okay look at uh, some examples this is fish roe fish and this is shark this is electric ray fish and here you can see lots of examples that belong to class Pisces there are different varieties of fishes in the ocean yes and all of them do not have limbs okay so if they do not have limbs how do they move around in water how do they swim they swim by using their fins now let us have a look at their feature one by one the first feature is they are poikilothermic poikilothermic means they are cold-blooded animals and their temperature changes with temperature of the surrounding next they have gills to breathe 
in water and you know that gills can absorb oxygen from water lungs cannot absorb oxygen from water but gills can absorb oxygen from water and the next one they locomotive by using fins and change direction by using tail there should be no confusion about this and then they have spindle shaped body spindle shaped means the body is pointed in the front it is uh, thick in the middle and again it is slender or pointed at the back so that it can cut through the water current okay water current will not stop them from moving forward okay the spindle shaped body helps to re register water current and next the digestive system is complete that means they have both mouth and anus mouth is at the anterior part of their body and anus is at the posterior part of their body okay and the last point they are unisexual unisexual means an individual is either male or female male and female reproductive system are present in different individual and reproduction in class pisces is always sexual let us go to next class class number 2 amphibia well amphibia amphi means both are mixed okay amphi means both are mixed now amphibia literally means the organisms which can live in both water and land see the class pisces totally lives in water class reptilia totally lives on land okay but class amphibia it is between pisces and reptilia so class amphibia can be considered as link of development from uh, aquatic animals to terrestrial animals so you can see class amphibia in earlier stage of life they live in water in earlier stage of life they live in water just like class pisces and they don't have limbs in that stage so they totally <coughs> resembles class pisces as they grow up their limbs appear and their gills disappear the limbs appear gills disappear um lungs start to develop okay and then when their development is completed they come to land to live so their later stage is completed in land see earlier stage of life completes in water and later stage of life completes on land so they are adapted to both land and water okay however if we keep adult frogs or adult amphibians in water for very long time then they can also drown just like other terrestrial animals so only in earlier stage of life they are completely aquatic okay some examples are frog toad salamander etc okay, you can have some look at these pictures frog toads okay what are the differences between frog and toad toads usually um toads the cannot breathe through their skin toads live completely on land toads live completely on land in their adult stage whereas frog they are very unique they can live on both land and water in adult stage as well even as adult they can breathe through their skin in water okay they have unique ability and others you can see this is salamander newt and caecilian caecilian they just looks like snake okay let us have a look at other features of class amphibia first of all the body is divided into head and trunk they head means you already know that trunk means the part of body where vital organs are placed and next they are unisexual that is male and female individual are separate the third one fertilization is external 
and during mating process females lay egg and males release sperm over the egg so they are oviparous now this is quite unique point for uh, the class amphibia what happens in case of amphibia is during mating process females lay egg and on top of egg males release sperm so sperm and egg they meet outside the body so fertilization occurs outside the body okay that's why the fertilization is external and you definitely know what is oviparous oviparous means egg laying animals and in early this is the main point of class amphibia in early stage of life cycle they have gills and breed in water whereas in later stage of life cycle the gills degenerate and lungs are developed so they breed in air some amphibians such as frogs have moist skin to breed in water and their heart has three chambers okay that much about amphibia next is the class reptilia well class reptilia they are quite unique from amphibia because they are totally adapted to land one hallmark of class reptilia is the development of egg shell that is a hallmark of class reptilia now let us uh, have a look at class amphibia they lay eggs they lay eggs but their egg do not have shell their leg do not have shell okay and their embryo their embryo they depend on surrounding water for development okay so you can say this tadpole is still the early stage of embryo early stage of development yes but all this development in case of reptiles all this development completes inside the egg because because the reptilian eggs they have yolk and they have albumin the yolk provides nutrient albumin provides water okay and the uh, shell provides covering and protection okay so so amphibians they have to lay their egg in water amphibians they have to lay their egg in water because the embryo that comes out of egg are still not developed and for their development they need water that's why they need to lay their egg in water and their early stage of life cycle completes in water but after evolution of egg shell after evolution of egg shell these animals they don't have to lay their egg in water they can create their own aqueous environment they can create their own environment inside the egg yes nutrient is provided inside the egg water is provided inside the egg and the protection is provided by the shell of the egg so inside the egg the development can continue and when the development is completed when the development is completed then the babies they hatch out of the egg okay got it okay so class reptilia the hallmark of class reptilia is the evolution of egg shell okay okay you can uh, write it somewhere the hallmark of class reptilia is the evolution of egg shell it is because of evolution of egg shell that these creatures they can they get to come out of water okay it is because of the evolution of egg shell that these creatures they are able to come out of water okay and that's why reptilia they are totally terrestrial animals they are totally terrestrial animals they have lungs to breathe in air they cannot breathe in water however some creatures some animals like crocodile or turtle they have adapted to live in water as well but remember 
even though they live in water they cannot breathe in water they need to come to air for breathing and they need to come to land for laying eggs okay let's have a look at some examples of crocodile these are the types of sorry some examples of reptilia these are the types of reptilia turtle which lives in water tortoise lives on land chameleon they're found in dense forest okay gecko they're found in desert yes and then a uh, snake they are found almost everywhere lizard crocodile found near water and skink okay skinks are not very different from lizard yes okay now let's have a look at the features of reptilia first of all look at the first point they have cloaca look at the diagram this structure this structure it is called cloaca cloaca receives the uh, waste material from intestine as well as from kidney okay from intestine stool is formed from kidney urine is formed but in this cloaca both urine and stool are received they mixed up they are stored in this cloaca and when it is full they are excreted okay so they do not urinate they do not urinate okay there is a saying that if wall lizard urinates and the urine falls to your eye then we go blind so we should not uh, keep on looking at wall lizard <laughs> but that is not true because a wall lizard does not urinate okay okay they have cloaca instead of rectum and urinary bladder they don't have rectum they don't have urinary bladder rectum collects feces and urinary bladder collects urine whereas cloaca collects both urine and feces and they are mixed up okay next they have four limbs however the animals of snake group do not have limbs you all know this and the have they have four chambered heart in um amphibia heart has three chamber in pisces heart has two chamber now in reptilia heart has four chamber that means they are developing progressively yes next they are oviparous that is they lay egg next they are mostly cold blooded animals however dinosaurs were warm blooded okay all of the reptilia are cold blooded animal the exception is dinosaurs they are warm blooded and from some creatures some creatures that were considered to be dinosaurs from these creatures birds are evolved okay that is why birds are also warm blooded okay okay next uh, they breed through lungs that is why they cannot live in water in case of crocodile when they have to uh, plants in water they hold their breath they do not breathe at all inside water that's why even when they are even when they are in water there's not look uh, nose is present at the top of snot their snot usually remains outside water their body is designed in that way okay next their skin is covered by hard scales or cover the hard cover of tortoise and turtle are the densely keratinized skin okay their skin is usually hard because of the position of keratin okay many people think that the cover of tortoise the shell of tortoise is made up of bone but it is not bone it is skin it is skin and the skin becomes hard because of excessive deposit of excessive deposition of keratin the skin is hard because of excessive deposition of keratin and the same keratin is present in our hair as well okay that is why if you separate if you remove the tortoise shell from the body of tortoise it will not survive because of bleeding 
removing the tortoise shell is just like cutting out skin from your body and yes, that's a, that cannot be done okay that's all about reptilia let us go to class apes class 4 apes okay apes basically are birds ape means bird and the word apes comes from avian avian means those who fly avian means flying and even now on uh, aviation the word aviation is in common use aviation means uh, the term related to airplanes yes the term related to airplanes which fly okay now apes are those groups of group of vertebrates whose four limbs are modified into wings De definitely because of their wings they can fly this is very obvious some examples are kiwi penguin ostrich pigeon sparrow fowl etc but kiwi penguin and ostrich they cannot fly they cannot fly because their hind limbs are very long except penguin of kiwi and ostrich their hind limbs are very long okay but their four limbs are very short okay so their wings are very short and that much of wing cannot support their body in air okay whereas in other birds which can fly their wings are very long okay longer the wings more of trust will be there understood now in case of penguin their four limbs are modified for swimming not for flying okay have a look at some birds here I don't know the name of all of the birds but still it is very pleasant to look at the birds this one it is pelican this one it is hornbill owl heroin some of them I know this is emu and this everyone knows it is peacock eagle albatross okay that much I know that much only okay anyway uh, now let us have look at some of the features of class apes the four limbs are modified into wings which they use for flight the body is covered by feathers the snout is modified into toothless beak again you understand feathers and beak all birds have beak yes that is also common feature to the bird their heart is four chambered and just like reptiles they also have cloaca to collect feces and urine once again there is a popular saying that if you see a chicken uh, urinating if you see a chicken urinating you will become a millionaire very soon you will become a millionaire <laughs> there is such saying yes and many people they might have tried to keep on watching um, chicken to see whether they whenever they will urinate and there is a popular saying that chicken they will never urinate in front of man okay they are afraid of someone seeing them urinate but the reality is they never urinate they don't have urinary bladder they have cloaca cloaca receives both urine and feces which gets mixed up and it will be excreted next one they have hollowed bone which have lower density look at the bone here it has lots of air pockets yes our bone is dense solid but it but the bones of bird they are not solid there is a lot of air pockets okay because of that their bones are weak and extremely light also and that helps them to fly next one they are oviparous that's how you get to eat egg chicken egg dog egg isn't it that's how you get to eat yes they lay egg to reproduce and they are homeothermic that means they are warm blooded so their body temperature always remain constant they are homeothermic means their body temperature always remains constant whether the environment remains hot or cold doesn't matter yeah? okay, let us go to the last class of 
vertebrata, phylum vertebrata, it is mammalia. The word mammalia comes from mammary glands. Mammary glands. Mammary glands are the special glands that is present in female individuals, yes, which have the glands that produce or which have the cells that produce milk. Okay. Mammary glands are the special cells present only in female individuals males do not have it it is present only in female individuals and these glands they produce milk milk is white liquid substance which is rich in protein and fat okay and milk is supposed to be the diet of children diet for the children okay the children they subsist on milk from mother yes okay uh, so the individuals sorry the vertebrates which have mammary gland the vertebrates which have mammary gland and they feed their youngs with the milk produced by their mammary gland they are kept in the class mammalia okay some examples of mammalia are you can say this is raccoon not raccoon sorry this is red panda here man well dolphins tiger seal elk and then this is flying fox bat and this is walrus again there are many other examples as well like cow buffalo goat dog cat lion deer pig they are also mammals they all have mammary glands that produce milk to feed their youngs got it okay the major features of mammals many of them you already know they have external ears called pinna pinna means this one look this is the pinna external ear other classes do not have external ear they have ear but they don't have external ear have a look at the diagram of birds do you see external ear in them pinna do you see pinna in them and in case of reptilia also do you see pinna and crocodile do they have pinna and lizard skink do they have pinna no they don't have external ear they have ear but they don't have external ear external ear is characteristic feature of class mammalia okay and next feature is their body is covered by fur and hair putla okay body of birds covered by feather body of reptiles covered by scales okay body of amphibia they are moist and body of fish covered by waxy scales okay next they are homeothermic that is they are warm blooded animal their heart has four chambers they breed with lungs up here there is no confusion they are viviparous viviparous means they give birth to live fetus and one ex one exception is platypus platypus lays a okay you can have a look at this diagram this is platypus a dog billed platypus and it has some features common to reptiles some features common to birds and some features common to mammals so these dog billed platypus they are considered as the connecting link between the reptiles and mammals they prove that mammals are developed from reptiles that we'll study in our next lesson okay so they are adapted in swimming they live in water and they lay egg all mammals lay all mammals give birth to live babies but they lay egg just like reptiles they lay egg and just like bird they have beak okay but if they lay egg why are they not kept in class reptilia why are they kept in class mammalia the main reason is they have mammary glands you can see in this diagram in this picture the mother platypus they suckle uh, their young with the milk produced by their mammary glands this one is suckling okay so because they have mammary glands and they produce milk and they feed their baby with 
द मिल्क प्रोड्यूस बाय द मैमरी ग्लैंड दे आर केप्ड इन क्लास मैमिलिया ओके फॉर द सेम रीजन फॉर द सेम रीजन वेल्स एंड डॉल्फिन्स आर आल्सो केप्ड इन द क्लास मैमिलिया दे हैव मैमरी ग्लैंड टू शॉकल देयर बेबी दे हैव मैमरी ग्लैंड दैट प्रोड्यूस मिल्क एंड दे फीड देयर मिल्क विथ एंड दे फीड देयर बेबीज विद द मिल्क प्रोड्यूस बाय देयर memory gland okay that is the reason why dolphins and whales are kept in class mammalia okay bats they fly like birds but still they are also kept in the class mammalia for the same reason they have memory glands and then and they suckle their young with the milk produced by their memory glands okay now let us have a look at other features um internal fertilization occurs in them well while mating process during mating process male transforms sperm into the uterus of female male transfer sperm into the uterus of female so sperm meet the eggs inside the body of female that is why fertilization is internal okay so with that we have discussed all the phylums and classes of kingdom animalia now last thing we have to do in classification of animal is just like in plant we have to classify them okay look at the example of classification of human human belong to kingdom animalia and in kingdom there are kingdom animalia there are nine phylum and human belongs to phylum chordata inside chordata sub phylum vertebrata human have notochord from head to tail and throughout its life not just in um embryo stage but throughout its life and in vertebrata there were two super classes tetrapoda and apoda human have four limbs so they belong to tetrapoda super class tetrapoda have four classes amphibia reptilia apes and mammalia now human beings they have mammary gland so they belong to class mammalia and genus and species of human beings are homo sapiens main characteristics they give birth to live fetuses and they have mammary glands okay i guess there should be no problem with this and then hammerhead shark definitely be it belongs to kingdom animalia and it is phylum chordata its sub phylum is vertebrata super class is pisces because it does not have any limbs and in pisces its class is chondrichthyes and you don't need to write this okay i have written this but you don't need to write this you have not studied this you can include this pisces as the class instead of super class you can include pisces as the class because that is what mentioned in your syllabus okay okay genus sphyrna and spices mokarum major characteristics they give birth to live fetuses well class spices they lay egg but shark family they give birth to live fetuses they don't lay egg okay and they have mammary glands ah what did i write here so i said they don't have mammary glands I guess I cop I forgot to change this this one. Uh they have gills to breed in wool. Okay, that much. Okay? Now you also have to attempt to classify these creatures, these animals. Okay? Genus, species. Now take an example tapeworm it is very short okay the classification is very short tapeworm belongs to kingdom animalia phylum platyhelminthes genus tinea species solenum and uh, you just give their characteristics that's all okay mosquito kingdom animalia phylum arthropoda class insecta genus culex species platicans it's like that you can attempt all of them okay there are 10 animals that you need to attempt okay take this screenshot or pause the screen and copy the question 
Okay, these are your homework for today. These are your assignment for today. Okay, that's all for today. In our next class, we will discuss about the life cycle of mosquito and their harmful effects. Okay, that much for today. Thank you, class.